Hi everyone, it's Heather here at Creative Faith Art Studio and today I'm going to show you how to make a traveler's notebook cover. Um, this is made from some um, scrap fabric that I had from a quilting project that I finished um, and some scrapbook paper and uh, an old cereal box for chipboard. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the cereal box and cut it down into some pieces and trim it to size. I'm going to make it six by nine. So um, if any of you follow me on Instagram, this is the same process I use to make my son's traveler's notebook who I just sent off to college. I gave him um, the traveler's notebook and three inserts as a gift. I had made the inserts actually several months ago um, and was kind of holding on to them. Um, but then when I kind of had the idea of um, giving him this as a gift, then I, I went ahead and um, gave those to him as well. Um, the inserts I actually made uh, six by nine. So this is actually going to be six and a quarter by nine and a quarter. So I just trim off all the flaps off the cereal box and the bit larger flaps if they're not damaged I I keep to make tags from um, but then the other ones I just toss so here I'm going to trim it making sure it's all nice and even and then I cut it down to six and a quarter by nine and a quarter on both uh, both pieces So now I've got my two pieces. I have my uh, two pieces of paper. I picked two different, two different um, ones, and I glue it down with some of that tacky glue. Um, the paper is. Um, let me see if I can find the cover for it. The paper is a vintage collection. Um, gosh, I can't find it. It's a vintage collection. It's a just a pad that I bought. Um, I want to say I got it on. I want to say Amazon. Here it is. Vintage Treasures Designer Paper. Looks like it's by Color Book. Um, so it's just twelve by twelve paper. It's a pad. It's fairly light stock. It's not a card stock, but they have two sheets of each. Um, and on Cal's, I did a. Um, on my son's I did a an old typewriter um, and an old rotary phone. This was um, kind of a close-up of those things and it, it was a, really kind of a warm black and white sepia, not too sepia but a little bit um, and I really liked the way it turned out. So I'm going to glue these down and I use the, my bone folder to um, kind of press it down really well and make sure it's all adhered wipe up my space. I keep a little box of baby wipes actually by my um, work area so I can clean up glue and stuff. So then I trim off the corners so when I wrap it it's um, when I wrap it around the cover then or the chipboard then it's nice and it's not all bulky and stick out too far so My glue is a little, I need to find a better way of doing this. Like I, the glue always goes to the bottom and it takes a long time to um, come back up when I want to use it again. So it can be kind of, I don't know, lose my patience quickly on that. Um, so I use a paintbrush, an old paintbrush to spread out the glue a little bit. Um, so it's a nice even coat and I make sure it all goes all the way to the edges. Anytime I use that glue and I'm going to adhere the either paper or fabric or whatever, I always make sure it goes right to the edges of the chipboard. So just tucking it in and make sure it's nice and neat. And then I do the same thing to the other side. Just fold it over. On the corners there, I had to add a little extra glue because there's a little overlap. 
yeah, so there are my covers. I make sure that they're both right sides up. And then I have this, this fabric that's got an infusible webbing on the one side. Um, because I was doing it, uh, using that batik for an applique project that I did. Um, I have to admit that didn't turn out very well, but which was disappointing, but it was a good, <laughs> good learning experience, I guess. Um, so then I measure, you know, from top to bottom, I want that to be a two inch gap from top to bottom. So I make sure it's nice and even, make sure that the bottom edges line up Although you can't really see that it's off camera and then I just glue that fabric down and that's going to be my outside spine of my um, of my cover on Kale's I did it differently and I put the inside on first and then trimmed it down um, but then when I put the outside edge on it didn't have a nice neat um, a nice neat finish so I tried it this way I mean it was fine like don't give me it was it was still lovely you couldn't but be, when I because I was looking up close at it at the you know kind of getting some of the detail um, it actually was kind of a neat effect because it was not you know a smooth edge like this this one is um, it had a little it was a little rough which I, I kind of liked again because it's you know he's a He's a young man, and um, I thought it gave it a you know a little more kind of a more rustic quality. Um, so here I am. I'm just going to trim the fabric down to a more workable size, and then again I apply glue all over the um, the inside of the cover and spread that around. Again, you have to work all the way to the edges and make sure it gets really well covered with glue because um, you want the fabric to stick, you know, really well. It's got to be really durable. So now I'm going to trim again a little bit of the excess off on the sides just so it's a little workable and I use the bone folder again to kind of flatten everything out. Press it down on both sides and then I use scissors to um, just go right along the edge. I kind of tilt the scissors at an angle um, to trim the fabric because I, I go right up to the edge of the paper and you know this you had to go I had to go pretty slow because you don't want to cut the cut the um, paper or the fabric from the from the outside of the cover so um, so it took a it this is obviously a sped up but it took me quite a quite a while to get this and then I went back around and trimmed it up a little bit because there were some places where um, I didn't quite trim off enough and now this is still a wet um, cover because of all the glue so I have to let it uh, dry for a while but so far I like it I like the way it turned out so now it's dry and it's kind of curved up a little bit um, so I go and trim off some of the little fuzzies because I'm going to apply a varnish to the outside. Um, this is a matte varnish by Liquitex. It's an acrylic for acrylic painting. Um, I don't know if it's a new bottle I bought or if it's um, an old one. I, I tend to lose track of my supplies. But um, I actually put two coats of this varnish on both sides. So um, And then to speed the process up, I used a... Um, like a, an old hair dryer to um, dry the varnish. What's kind of neat on the fa on the paper side, the varnish absorbs into the um, into the paper really quickly. So it's 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 amazing. Um, and then I I don't know if you noticed, but I did switch brushes because I found that I was using some cheap brushes that I got specifically to do this kind of work with varnish or glue or whatever. And I started seeing little um, hairs from the brush in my varnish finish, so I had to um, throw that brush away and pick out some little tiny hairs and then 
I continued on with this. And again, I did two coats of varnish on the inside too. And what's so cool is the way, once it's dry, the way it feels. It's like a, it's almost like a leathery feel to the cover. It's pliable um, and it's soft, but the, the fabric side has a little bit of tooth to it. It's a little rough, um, but the paper side, I mean, just when you pick it up, it's again, it's it's almost like a, if you've ever had like a wax dipped um, canvas, it, that's what it feels like. It's just the coolest feeling. I don't know. I love it. So now I know that my the distance between the, the two chipboard pieces are two inches. So I'm going to go ahead and I mark, I'm going to mark the places for my um, eyelets because that's where I'm going to speed through the loops to put the inserts in. So, um, and I actually make five marks, but I only put in three eyelets because um, I was worried about the durability of the spacing, you know, but, you know, between the, it left such a small space between the eyelets if I would have put all five in, that I was worried that it would, um, you know, the durability of the cover would have been compromised. So I end up, like I said, I mark five, but I only put in three. So and I use the middle one and the outermost one on both sides then. In the and then in the middle I measure down um, I measure down halfway down from the middle on the outside rings again. Um, and I measure up halfway and I put two marks in um, one on each side because this is where I actually put the ribbon for um, to close the to close the cover or tie it closed so um, I get my crocodile and my eyelets and I go ahead and punch the holes so I measure in I think I did uh, three eighths I did three eighths inch holes. Is that right? No, I did one eighths inch hole. That'd be really big. Um, I measured in three eighths of an inch in to punch the holes into the cover for the eyelets. But I used one eighth inch um, eyelets for each of the holes. So it's a one eighth inch hole that's measured in three eighths of an inch into the fabric if that makes sense um and i'm sorry i keep hitting that stand that's really distracting um the so and then i do the same thing on the middle i just fold the cover in half and i poke the hole through um and I, I really am sorry i keep hitting that stand um and the eyelet setter is really kind of frustrating um, because they're so small and the opening in the crocodile is so small and you, you, it's tricky getting your, getting everything in there. Um, and this is something I haven't used a lot. Um, so there's different ways of setting it up. Like you can use different, like they have a different base to put the eyelid on and a different top. You can turn this, this little black thing in it. It changes it to the thing. So again, um, the, I'm sorry for the camera shake there, but I get all my eyelets in place, and I do that on both sides. So now I've got all six eyelets in the, the top and the bottom of the spine. And for the middle ones, I have to use something different because obviously my crocodile is not going to go in there. So I get my um, eyelet setter and punch set out and I have a little metal um, kind of I guess it's kind of like an anvil that I can use so I don't damage my table that I love so much um, so and then I just use the setter to um, kind of tap it down a little bit whoa that's really shaky And I do that on both sides. So now I've got um, the covers kind of well set. I'm going to put my stuff away. 
and I go and get my bookmaker's twine. So this, honestly, it's like a, um, if you've never seen it or used it before, it's almost like a waxed tooth dental floss. It's, um, it's got, it got a neat texture to it again, and it's very durable. Um, but I just, and I know a lot of people when they make these, they use an elastic uh, band, or like a string, or I don't know what it's called. It's some sort of elastic. Um, and the stuff I had that was elastic was really thin, so I didn't think it would last very long. Um, and this seemed to work well on my son's notebook. You know, it's not stretchy by any means, but it held the, the notebooks in place. It was easy to slide them in and out. Um, so, and I do it, again, I did mine a little different than other people. I know a lot of people just, they don't like the loops on the outside to show, and I personally think it adds another layer of texture, um, and I really like the way it looks. So I went ahead and left the strings go from the front to the back. Um, I like, again, I like the way that looks. And when you get the, ins the, the notebook inserts in the cover, it, um, they're just a, kind of a nice, again, this little added texture. So um, here I'm just tying a little loop, and I feed it through one, set, one eyelet in the middle, and then I feed it through the other eyelet in the middle, and that's where my ribbon goes through. So that's how I tied the book closed. Really simple. Um, I didn't go out and buy anything special. I just used kind of what I had here, and I like the way it turned out a lot. Um, this is it's an old piece of flannel um, that I used to tie it. So, um, so that's it. It's just you know pretty simple. Um, didn't take very long to make. I mean, a, an hour or two really of time. But, um, but I think if you were going to sit down and make these as gifts for somebody, I think it's time well spent. I did actually take a little extra time on this one, and I don't know if you can see from the video, but I did stitch around the outside of the cover. Um, just to give it again another little added um, texture um, and I finally got my sewing machine fixed so that was kind of an exciting thing I got to use it but that's it so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you like the notebook I'd love to hear from you if you have any comments um, or suggestions I, I'm always open to such suggestions um, if anything you'd like to see or any questions at all just let me know so thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.